Croissant, welcome back to Croydon Cottage Diary and here you find me in my happy place in the garden. Um, I've been desperate to show you the garden for some time but it has literally rained pretty much incessantly from July to now. Well it's still raining um, so we just thought we'd come out and do it. So we bought the cottage um, just over seven years ago and um, we didn't start work on the garden until about four or five years ago so it is a very new garden when we bought it there wasn't a garden you um, came up the garden steps and um, you were just hit with a sort of barrage of bramble and um, Ponticum rhododendron which is very invasive here in Wales so we spent a long time just clearing that and clearing trees that had fallen down. Um, the purpose of the garden for me really is that it's a wildlife friendly garden. It's absolutely imperative. So one of the first things we did, with Dodo, if you don't mind showing, is that um, we dug this pond here, which is just such a joy. And has got newts and frogs and toads and things. And, um, I absolutely love wildflowers, well we both do, so my aim was to put as many native British wildflowers into our garden as possible and um, if people are interested I'd like to sort of do at this time of year anyway a very regular update on what, what I'm growing in the garden that's a native and therefore particularly good for our wildlife and what's a non-native but that's also really good for wildlife so if you're interested in that give me a thumbs up or something because that would be really nice to know so at the moment what you can see in the garden that's native oh actually i should just mention we had to terrace all of this we're on a very steeply sloping mountain side um, and it's all very sort of slaty stony brown um, so we've had to sort of terrace to, to make any sort of garden at all. So yeah, the lovely yellow going back in the pond is a king cup, which is just joyous. I mean, it's just, it's, you always have to wear sunglasses to, to look at it. And we've also got, I'm sure most people will know, the forget-me-nots here which again are just so lovely and um, personally I would recommend that you leave the seed heads on. I know it will then spread everywhere which some people might not like but we leave it on and the amount of birds that love to feast on the seeds isn't it Daisy? And also little mice and things come and have a, a little nibble so that's really really sweet. We've got cowslips. Actually, that's more of an oxlip, isn't it? I think that's. In fact, I think that's a fo false oxlip. I think what's happened. What can happen if you grow cowslips and primroses, is that they can hybridise, and I think that's hybridised. So I don't think it's actually an oxlip. I think it's a false oxlip that one. Um, but yeah. So we've got prim. We've got our native primroses in flower on this side of the garden. Um, anything else that's native that's out at the moment, Daisy, can you see? I think that's, I think that's all mm. that's native. Oh. oh, yes, of course, how could I forget? And of course we've got the black thorn out at the moment, which is a, a native or the slow, so you can make nice slow gin. And as far as non-native, in, in this area. Oh, no, we've got the water gym. This is a native here. It's very unassuming. It's like the, it's um, a relative of the geums that we grow just in our perennial bed. So we've got that's a native. And then let's show, let's maybe show the non native. This is a non native. This is called Mai Tai. This gym here. But, but they are really good for wildlife. And even though the native flower is very unassuming, the pollinators go absolutely mad for it, don't they, Daisy? Yeah. Um, so 
that's all we've got in flower. Oh, well, we've got green alphabet actually, yeah. which is a native. Yeah, we've got, oh look, there's a tree on this long water already. Oh, look. This is a really good plant for wildlife. Pulmonaria or lungwort. Look at its lovely spotty leaves. Mm. And it's called lungwort because um, in the doctrine of signatures, they they um, thought that it would be a good medicine for diseased lungs because they used to think the leaves looked like diseased lungs. So yeah, there's green alkanet here, which is a native or naturalized anyway it's been in this country for a long time i'm not i don't think they're sure if it's actually a native that's out at the moment but um yeah other things in the garden are the typical sort of things that most people are growing at this time of year we've got some hellebore we haven't got many we've got quite a few hellebore in the garden but we've got a bit of an issue with um a gang of pheasants that come and destroy pretty much all the plants in the garden so only a couple of them have managed to flower this year. Look the Aquilegia is about to pop. One of my favourite plants, I'll show you that again when it's in flower. So we've got Honesty or Lunaria which is this white plant here, again very very good for butterflies and bees and you've probably if you're not familiar with the flower you've probably seen it when it's got its seeds because they look like sort of papery moons and they're used a lot in flower arrangements and things that was an absolute must for us in the garden I grew it first from seed and then have let itself seed and then dig up the seedlings and pop them around the garden it also you can also get it it's in fact it's more common really as a, as a purpley pink flower so I said we've then got the geans um, and we've got some tulips and here is another plant that I love for wildlife this is a scabious scabious butterfly blue and there are quite a few native British scabious and we do grow a couple of them don't we like um, sheep's bit scabious, devil's bit scabious um, but they flower a little bit later so we like to grow um, a, what do you call it? I can't think of Cultivated. Cultivated, thank you. Cultivated variety um, as well because this flowers a lot earlier so it means that foraging creatures get get something to eat very early on so oh look Daisy look the raven's wing again I've been battling you might notice that some of my some of my um, plants are in cages it's not because they've been very very bad it's because again we have a problem with the pheasants eating all our plants and also the slugs and snails are quite fond of, of those so um but yeah for some reason they haven't gone for this one and yeah yeah yet yeah i shouldn't speak too soon but isn't it stunning i just love the sort of very dark um lead plants so we've got quite a few dark leaf plants that are just starting to emerge and I just love that contrast, particularly at this time of year with the, all the different greens and then some very dark purpley, almost black leaves. We've got a black elder up, up there, we've got a smoke bush, we've got a Physocarpus diablo, all give that effect. I will show these again in a couple of weeks when they're, when they're out fully so, so you can see the effect that they, that they can give. So as I said, this is actually full of native plants which will be coming out in the, week, in the weeks and months to come and which I will really happily show you. So yeah, so this, this is my absolute favourite part of the garden. It, it really is my happy place. But um, let's show you um, over here, shall we, Daisy? Shall we go, go over?
so this is, I suppose, the working area of the um, garden. It's, yeah, our fruit and veg area and herb area. I'm actually redesigning it a bit. Again, it was, it was a sloping hillside like this, full of, um, yeah, bramble and conifers and things, but um, the Leylandii that just get enormous, so I've had to do a lot of work here. Well, I've had to, had to terrace it a lot, but yeah, this is the the bones of the, the working bit of the garden. So in here in the summer, we have our courgettes growing and lots of herbs. At the moment, we've got our blueberries, which are in flower. And we've got some Welsh onions. We've got sorrel and wild oregano and different things. This is a lovely, sorry darling to mess you about, this is a lovely dead nettle. You know? I love that, brilliant for wildlife. So we've got primroses and forget me not forgot about. This is primarily, as I said, the sort of the produce area, but I like to also put in lots of flowers because I don't want any area in the garden to not be good for wildlife. And particularly at this time of year when we're only growing some edible stuff then I like the edges to be covered in snowdrops and forget-me-nots, primroses, all that sort of thing and then later in the season there'll be things like calendula and nasturtiums and borage that will that will edge areas so um, yeah nature comes before us most definitely and um, in this area here again lots and lots of herbs I've put in recently I won't bother showing you because it <laughs> it's, just, it's just a little stalk like that but I've put in some wild leeks which I, I bought the bulbs from eBay so wish me luck but some of them have started popping up so hopefully we will get a crop that's quite exciting I'm increasingly interested in growing perennial food because it's quite challenging we've got I don't know if you want to quickly can Daisy I've got the smallest greenhouse known to humankind we inherited it when we bought the house um, it, it came with the house but it was put up in um, 1960 and it's just it's so so small I mean I funnily enough we actually grow a peach tree in there do you want to show the greenhouse or not? Yeah, is it worth showing? Let's have a little... Show the chaos that is is my growing space. Because I haven't got a potting shed. In fact, we didn't talk about plants for the garden. Yeah, we'll have a little I'm, I'm not very, I'm not being very good at this. I'm so excited about showing you the garden. I'm forgetting what I want to show. So do you want to sort of go I in? Like, go and have a little... For both of us. So, so this is, this the, is the ridiculous peach that was supposed to be a patio peach. But obviously... Then yeah. get the memo. Uh, yeah, so it's supposed to be about five foot. Is that a peach coming there? There's some peaches coming, yeah. Zoom in, zoom in. Um, yeah, so, yeah, my mum said, got little... oh, let me get you a peach. It's just a little patio peach. Just it's a little tiny. baby one. And literally, I mean, you can see how tall it is now. It's how long, how tall do you say, Daisy? Six and a half. Six and a half. But, and yeah. that's only because that's where it reaches the top of the greenhouse and, and then I we have to hack it back yeah i have to hack it back several feet every season anyway so this is the, this is where i'm growing everything um or attempting to because um the slugs are eating everything the snails are eating everything the rodents get in here and eat everything we then put things in the cottage out of reach of what who we thought would eat everything and then Brian decided in to, the reach of Brian yeah Brian our lovely very characterful cat decided that he wanted to eat all the seedlings including the tomato seedlings so he ate them and then proceeded to project our vomits all over the cottage so <laughs> so the say tomatoes feel, had to be resown. yeah to say I feel slightly thwarted this year by um other people wanting to eat our crops is, a, is an understatement so yeah this is where this is where I'm attempting to grow everything but 
yeah, so back up here. So this is the area where we grow pumpkins and lots of herbs. Um, also, we always, always have a wigwam, um, not wigwam, T what's it called? TP thing. Oh. Or was it a, oh, I don't know. You know the sort of the tripod shapes um, made of sticks. We always have one there. And I think I'm going to try and grow tomatoes outside for the first time this year up then. Um, over here, this is a very much a working area. This was just full of herbaceous perennials so plants that flower and come up and down sort of every year but I'm slightly tweaking it so I thought that it would be nice if most of the things over here had either some apart from the early flowering things but in the sort of the the main sort of produce season that everything was functional in some way so if it's you know has medicinal properties or edible properties or quite often both so I've started adding more herbs and things which will still be great for pollinators there won't be anything put in here that isn't good for for wildlife but um, I just thought it would be quite nice to have more of a scheme because over there that's my sort of that's my place for, for just decorative flowers and things for wildlife and over here I want it to be sort of fairly functional so like a sort of apothecary slash kitchen garden isn't it Daisy that's kind of what we were going for I've just put in a campaign here which again is very unassuming but is a lovely sort of sunflower that grows quite tall a perennial sunflower that's that has lots of medicinal properties and there's yarrow and different things and we will also be putting in some oh there they are there they are they're coming for their breakfast that's one of the pheasants yeah I'll be putting in courgettes here as well um, and we made this, this rustic willow arch which we've also put flowering currant up and roses and clematis which you'll see later in the season and I'm going to grow one of the mini pumpkins is it jack be little we grow jack be little that i'm hoping will train over the arch is it i think it's probably sturdy enough now to take yeah. some little pumpkins isn't it so we'll have a go at doing that because they, they'll look quite sweet if if they don't get completely eaten by the wildlife and um yeah sort of dangling down this is our little fire pit which needs a good weed actually daisy look yeah um of my health i haven't been gardening quite as much as i normally would i'd normally be going like a crazy thing but um i haven't managed to do quite so much but yeah that's a lovely little space isn't it the fire pit so here we've now got what is this year for shallots and leeks and there's always the rhubarb the rhubarb is just humongous this year yeah i'm not sure if it's all the rain yeah it's just it's absolutely enormous um, oh, I forgot to mention in that little bread bin there are potatoes growing, that old bread bin. Oh, and we, I've also sown two rows of carrots in here, but I have very little hope of them doing anything because, yeah, our carrot, as soon as I sow anything directly into the ground, it, it usually gets eaten. So, But you never know. Um, under the cloches... There uh, are our asparagus, which I put in last year. If you're a gardener, you'll know that we won't be able to eat any this year, but might be able to start cropping a little bit next year. So everyone told me you can't grow asparagus in Wales, but I want to give it a go. And they did seem to do all right last year, didn't they? But the reason the cloches are on them is because Mr. Pheasant, Mr. Fezziwig as we call him, likes to nibble them so <laughs> he's going to destroy them <laughs> so let's move move up here this is our garlic bird which is doing okay and the, the sort of green rosettes in the around it are not weeds that's lamb's lettuce that we're growing 
I decided that I would make the most of the fact that we're on a slope. And so where I've terraced, obviously when you have a terrace, you then have a slope down. So if you can see, I don't know if you're picking that up, darling, and this one up here, but I decided that I would use it as an opportunity because we're south facing. I decided that I would plant strawberries and violets along the sloping bit of each terrace. So they get a lot of sun and it's a good way of sort of holding in, holding the terrace in and of using what could be just sort of a wasted space that would need a lot of weeding. This at the moment is where our brassicas have been living and our perpetual spinach. They're now coming to an end, so it's all looking a bit scruffy because I've opened <coughs> opened the netting so that they can then flower and that the for foraging insects can feed on the on the flowers. We've got our little scarecrow there. That's Cynthia Rose. Do you want to give her a close-up? I'll give her a close-up. I'll just have a little look at these violets on my way. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, these are obviously a British native. I think most countries have violets. And to me, they're an absolute joy. Of course, they're edible, they're medicinal, and they're great for wildlife. So they tick all of the boxes for, for this area. But I would, to be honest, I would just have them just for the wildlife and because they look so lovely. So this is Cynthia Rose. She's, yeah, she's kind of doing a Kate Winslet Titanic pose, isn't she, Daisy? <laughs> this is all a bit scruffy here, but this is going to be where the peas go this year. Growing, oh, another one. Growing up along the side, side of the um, hedge. I decided that we'd put our raspberries, <coughs> excuse me, because they're quite forgiving. And we thought that that was a nice sort of use of space. And should we go up this way, so up there? And this sort of the strawberries and the raspberries then lead us up into what we possibly rather grandly call the orchard. Ooh. stack again. Oh my goodness, look, covered in mud. <laughs> it's been raining in Oh, big beautiful crab apple. Just blossoming up there, Daisy. Is that in shot? Yeah, it is in shot. Do you want to take a close-up? Because that's so I pretty. might go for a little wander. This is, yeah, what we rather grandly call the orchard. So um, we have actually got a very big garden for a UK garden. We've got a third of an acre in total. We're not going to show you all of it today. We're going to show you what we call the garden, really. And then we've got an extra area, which we don't regard as garden, which we're doing something else with, which we'll show you another day, will we? Or, sh yeah, we'll show another day. So here we've got black currants, a row of black currants. Again, with our strawberry violet system and the odd cowslip that's appeared. I'm also growing lovage and horseradish and things in amongst this. I suppose it's a kind of permaculture system, isn't it? Where the sort of the fruit, the fruit bushes and trees are, are furthest away from the cottage. But we just had to, because it's on a slope, we've just had to do what makes sense. And obviously you can't have, you can't have the big things at the bottom um, and then smaller things at the, at the back. So yeah, so this is the orchard. We've then got a row of gooseberries. And we've got 
several apple trees, plum trees, cherry trees that are just flowering, which is lovely. And again, it, we created a, it's a wildflower meadow without grass, basically. I'm determined not to have grass because I don't like mowing. I don't like strimming. I don't think it's great, really. And also we're on such a steep slope. It's madness, really, to try and to try and do anything like that up here. But um, I planted loads of wildflowers. There are also a few non-natives, like we have little tatar tate narcissi in here and things. But yeah, just things to to help out wildlife. I mean, nature hates a void. So if we just left the area under the orchard, it would just be grass and sort of pernicious weeds that we don't necessarily want. Whereas now, you know, I'm in charge of what goes on here. It probably looks quite natural and maybe a bit scruffy, but it's absolutely full of, of native plants that flower their socks off and look lovely, don't they Daisy, when they're, when they're all in flower. And also some of them are sort of um, medicinal as well. We've got you want to zoom in on the ground ivy, don't you? Yeah. Actually, there's some here if that's easier. That's probably easier than going up. So just stand here. Is it picking up? Yeah. Yeah. Of. So it's the, it's this one here. It is. So that's the leaf. And that's the little flower there. Ground ivy is very good for hay fever, so you can make a, a tea from it for hay fever. It's just got like a minty flavour. Yeah, yeah. And then up there is where we're not going to show you just yet, but yeah, again, a sort of um, passion project, I suppose, isn't it? That's a bit of additional land that we bought a couple of years ago. So, um, some bits that I forgot to mention when we were over here, professional as ever, were some of, <laughs> some of maybe the unattractive bits of the garden, but um, over in this area, by Josephine, our lovely hair, we deliberately kept a wild edge, so it's not that I can't be bothered weeding out it's it's very deliberate so we deliberately keep the nettles because most people are fine with growing wildlife friendly flowers that look beautiful for butterflies and bees and things but don't want an untidy garden so they get rid of their nettles please don't get rid of your nettles if you've got a little area that you can keep because obviously that's the food plant of the caterpillars for our native moths and caterpillars, uh, moths and butterflies. So if you get rid of that, no matter how many beautiful flowering plants you put in your garden, you're still going to be decimating your local population. So yeah, it may look unsightly to you, but actually it's kind of obscured quite quickly anyway, isn't it? In a few weeks time, the, the rows will, will be up here and um, we've got comfrey and all sorts of other things that will that will hide most of it. But we've got a lovely sort of run, a wraparound run of um, nettles there. And then I thought I would talk you through the two other 
Oh, you, you want to talk about the hurdles? Do you? Yeah, Daisy's is very proud of these. <laughs> We've um, just put in all our birch, birch plant supports for the year, which look so much prettier than bits of plastic and things. And we obviously foraged for free. And again, in a few weeks' time, you won't really be able to see them. But at the moment, at least they're something natural and, and attractive, aren't they? Um, quite sculptural, I think, aren't they? Yeah. So, oh, oh, look at this black one. It's absolutely stunning. And then this is another arch that we made um, from willow and, as you can see, honeysuckle. In fact, it almost, <laughs> it almost collapses with honeysuckle. And I... Last year I planted two climbing roses on here, which I won't talk to you much about now. I'll wait till they're in flower because they are absolutely lovely. And I knew I would forget someone, but this, I don't know if the camera's picking up on it, this beautiful, beautiful plant is an ajuga or a bugle. So that's another native plant, which we kind of let run riot by here. And then when we need to put other things in later in the season, we might take a, a few of them out and, and put them in another wild bit of the garden. But again, it's so good for wildlife and just really pretty, that lovely bronze foliage and the dark purple flower. So let me show you two projects, the two ugly bits of this bit of the garden as far as we're concerned. So are we can do the oil tank first? Yeah, let's do the oil yeah, tank. So, so this monstrosity is an oil tank. We attempted to obscure it with a lovely wild dog rose and my great yaya, my Greek grandmother's jasmine that she brought over from Greece um, but it's still shocking so we've commissioned somebody to make lovely woven willow panels to go around the oil tank so sorry about that we ran out of battery um, yeah so we will show you when that's done hopefully it will transform the garden because it's looking really scruffy and then pretty much next to it is our other project which you're not going to see done this year. I don't know when it's going to be done but it does need doing. This is our dilapidated shed which um, yeah really is falling down at the moment. We're just storing big branches ready for me to saw up for the wood burner. Yeah I'd love it to be a potting shed. I don't have a potting shed. I just have to sort of pot outside in all weathers hence my cough. Um, so it'd be really lovely. My aim is to sort of have a little wood burner in there and a lovely old sink where I can mix my compost and things and yeah, little chairs that we can sit and read in and um, while away the hours looking at the garden. But the problem is it's very difficult to get people to come and do um, building projects around, around this area everyone's always so busy but also we've got an additional problem in the winter we say to ourselves oh in the summer we'll we'll um knock the shed down and get somebody to to put build something lovely there but we have wrens that go and nest in there every summer and they're there again this year which and wrens are our favorite I mean it wouldn't matter if it was our favorite bird or not but the wren comes first so we say to ourselves well we can't do it in the summer in the spring and summer because the wrens are using it so that's their home and then when it comes to <laughs> to the winter then all the birds from around from the woodland and the garden and things when when it's winter time all go and shelter in there and roost in there because the glass is missing and so it's a lovely refuge for them so then we're thinking well, we can't knock it down in the winter because all the birds are, are using it to shelter 
so I don't know we're probably gonna have to put up some makeshift shelter or something first aren't we before we knock it down somewhere for the birds to go some sort of arbor structure somewhere by them a gazebo by them a gazebo yes so yeah that that really does ruin the garden it's so scruffy but it's it's a necessary evil at the moment isn't it daisy so you would are you just going to try and do some close-ups of the of the lovely flowers in the garden yeah the um oh the next video i want to share with you if anybody's interested is i like to garden by the phases of the moon because I love living seasonally and it's a really nice way of, of punctuating the, the month. So yeah, if you're interested, I'll just talk a little bit about, about how I do that. So I hope you've enjoyed the garden. I hope that you've managed to, I mean, the camera's really poor, so I don't know if the images will have come out, but it, it is a magical space to be in and to garden. We do love it. So yeah thank you for coming to visit us here and um, i'm really excited about showing you <clears throat> i mean obviously the garden's just starting at this time of year it's the beginning of the season so hopefully well it usually just looks better and better doesn't it so may may and june are normally my Our favorite months yeah. in the garden uh, so yeah i'm really excited to show you that but thank you for visiting oh also a very quick thing if you subscribe just please check if you don't mind if you're still subscribed because I've been getting messages from subscribers saying that they keep being unsubscribed by YouTube. I've contacted YouTube, they say they don't do that so it's a bit of a mystery but yeah please double check if you think you're subscribed and if you're not subscribed we would really appreciate it. It just lets us know that what we're doing is of interest to people otherwise we'll just keep keep all this as a home movie isn't it Daisy? Yeah. but um yeah thank you for joining us it's been lovely to have you here have a lovely week and take care and we'll see you soon